You know, as we enter the 2022 Major League Baseball season, a lot of people are talking about the great pitchers in Major League Baseball we have this year, and there's quite a few. But my thoughts, every time I see uh, the young Blue Jays play, or see the Dodgers, or, or see the continual rivalry between Boston and New York, I think about uh, back to the mid-1970s where some of the second-level teams had the best players but wouldn't get the most respect. Now, I'm, I want to put out a trivia question to you, and if you might know the answer, it might not. From the early to the mid-1970s, who do you think was the best pitcher in baseball? Was it Bob Gibson? Was it Vida Blue? Was it uh, part of the Baltimore's strong stars, including Palmer and Cuellar? Uh, was it Nolan and Ryan? Uh, none of these. Now, statistically, and for a lot of people, uh, especially at Sports Illustrated, where they made a legend out of them by putting them on the front, front page of the prestigious magazine, Wilbur Wood statistically was the best pitcher in baseball between 1971 and 1974. And you're saying to yourself, who the heck is Wilbur Wood? Well, probably the second uh, best knuckleballer of all time behind the great Hoyt Willem, and Hoyt would work on him. He was a big reliever before he went to be a starter, and especially in the 1974 season, we're going to talk about it a little bit here, he made history by not only winning two games on the same night, he also lost two games on the same night. Don't, don't know how that all came together, but we'll talk about it uh, uh, quickly. Now, uh, Wilbur Wood is the last, what do you call, super starter in, I think, Major League Baseball history. There's one season he started close to 50 games. He won 20, uh, over 20, and he lost over 20. Now, today we're going to be looking at the raw statistics uh, of his career, especially that 74 season. And the reason why I want to keep it to the 74 season is because technically that was his best statistic year. Now, born Wilbur Forrester Wood Jr. in October 22nd, 1941 in Cambridge. Uh, played 17 years in the major leagues, including for Boston, Pittsburgh, and Chicago White Sox for 11 years. Now, uh, with the White Sox, he truly left-handed and batted right-handed. So you can imagine that was a little bit of a challenge uh, for him. Now, raised in Belmont, Wood played several sports in high school and was signed by the hometown Red Sox in 1960. He pitched sparingly for them over parts of four seasons before being traded to the Pirates in 1964. Now, when he was traded to 19, uh, uh, the Pirates in 1964, a lot of people felt his career was going to be uh, coming to an end because you only get so many... Uh, uh, shots at it, but he became a knuckleball specialist after joining the White Sox, and again, that's that's where the, uh, the the talent came in. Now, with the Pirates, he was seldom used by the team in 1965. He spent all of '66 in the minor leagues before being traded to the White Sox. Now, Wood, who had previously relied on a fastball and curveball. Refined knuckleball would help again of the veteran knuckleball specialist Hoyt Willem. He spent the, spent the next four seasons as a relief pitcher for Chicago. And in 1968, he set a record, which was broken the next year, with 88 games pitched and was named the Sporting News American League Fireman of the Year. Now, the, the White Sox had tried to trade Wood before the 71 season, but the injury to starting pitcher Joe Horland caused him to put him, him in the starting rotation. That season, pitching coach Johnny Sainz suggested that Wood pitch with only two days rest between starts, since knuckleball specialists do not put as much stress on their arms as other pitchers. Wood proceeded to lead the ALA game started from 72 through 75, starting a career-high 49 games in 1972. That season, he also received a career high, recorded a career high, 376 and two thirds innings pitched. He won 20 or more games for four straight years, leading the AL in 72 and 73 with 24 wins. In 73, Wood also became the first pitcher to win and lose 20 more games in a season since Walter Johnson did so in 1916. Now, Wood was an all star in 71, 72, and 74. Now, after making 43 starts in 75, Wood only made 7 in 76. A line drive off the bat of Ron LaFleur of the Tigers fractured Wood's kneecap in a game against Detroit. 
Despite some months of rehabilitation, Wood was gun shy upon his return in 77 and per posted the worst earn run average among qualifying AL pitchers in 78 at 5.20. He then retired after the season. Woods again 90 wins from 71 to 74 were most by a major league pitcher during that span. Now a lifelong New England resident, Wood held a number of jobs in the Boston area after his retirement from baseball. So the 1970s were very good to him, but uh, when Chuck Tanner arrived in Chicago, this is where it got completely, completely bizarre. Now Tanner was well known for not giving up on players with uh, uh, great, uh, great success. Now the the the, the idea about Wood uh, with uh, Chicago in 1972, he was still starting about every three games. Uh, uh, as part of the three-man rotation, which also included future Montreal Expo and former Yankee Stan Bonson and Tom uh, Bradley. Now, they would get uh, every fourth day off, and there would be sequential hurlers, like one-offs, as we like to say. Now, the idea about uh, Wilbur, he said career high starts in England pitch in 72, again to 376 and two-thirds. Now, 73 was a very interesting campaign. He had a 1-2 and two start, then he won 12 of his next 13 mound visits. Now from April 25th to May 2nd, he threw three straight shutouts. Now facing Roland Nine at Rotten Ryan in a matchup that pitted one of baseball's hardest throwers versus one of baseball's softest on May 24, 73, Wood held the Angels scoreless He's a winner. He was the winner at Chicago Triumph by a 4-1 score. Now, Ron Fimrighty, reporter for Sports Illustrated, wrote that Wood looked for all the world like a man playing catch at a picnic. Now, for its June 4 issue, Sports Illustrated had planned to do a cover story on the Indy 500, but that was postponed because rain stopped the race past the editing deadline. Instead, the magazine featured Wood on the cover. Now, according to publisher Robert L. Miller, his name became a catchphrase for a backup core cover story after that. Now, on May 28, 73, while pitching for the White Sox against the Indians, he pitched the remainder of a 21-inning carryover game that had been suspended two nights earlier, allowing two hits in a victory. He then started the regular scheduled game and pitched a four-hit complete game shutout, earning two wins in the same night. Now, 13 wins, 40 games since the Chicago season. I certainly wasn't uh, tired tonight, and I couldn't pitch many more innings, he told reporters after the game. He faltered in June, though, posting a 1-8 record and a 4.43 ERA and losing six games in a row at one point. Now, against the Yankees on July 20th, Wood started both ends of a doubleheader, one of two pitchers to do so since Don Newcomb in 1950, and the other was Al Salterini in 71, and the last pitcher to do so since. After he failed to get any outs in the first game and took the loss, Tanner decided to start game two. He allowed a grand slam to Roy White in game two as part of seven runs and four and a half innings, losing his second start today. Despite allowing six runs to the Twins on July 29th, he won his 20th game of the year. Over the season's final two months, he posted a 4-6 and six record along with a 4.36 ERA. In 73, he led the AL with 24 wins and 20 losses, which was second that year. Uh, it was only the ninth time since 1900 that a pitcher had won and lost 20 games in the same year, and the first time since Walter Johnson did so in 1916. He eventually pitched 359 in the third innings and 48 starts, and both totals which led the league, finishing 8 in the AL with almost 200 strikeouts and 6 with 21 complete games. His ERA was 3.46 and Wood finished 5th in Cy Young Award voting. Now, Wood never had uh, the same success uh, and uh, he, he basically lost his pitches and the late 70s weren't good to him. But at the height of what he called the knuckleball era, because we had various knuckleballers in uh, pro uh, baseball. He was the king. Now, I watched Wilbur Wood in a game on a Saturday showcase on uh, what's uh, 
consider the uh, the French CBC in Canada, I think in 1973. Ladies and gentlemen, he wasn't the most beautiful pitcher out there. No Jim Palmer movement or Louis Tiant, but workmanlike. He could throw like close to 150 pitches and really not hurt anything because the knuckleball was that effective. But let me put this in perspective. When you lose two games in one night and win two games in one night, and you finish four games over 500 for the season for pitching, and you got 24 wins and 20 losses, you know you must be doing something right or wrong at the same time. And Chicago very, very close to a uh, West Matter in his era. And if he would have had somebody that could be that fourth starter, maybe he would have pitched 42 games instead of 48. Maybe he would have won the division that year. But I don't think anybody was beating Oakland in that era. So, But Wilbur Wood, that 73 season, ladies and gentlemen, what a legendary path to the top. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing here with our baseball podcast, especially on the vintage of the 60s and 70s, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, requests are always appreciated and always